Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Senator Donnell, you're up next, please. Thanks, uh, Chair and, and Professor. Thank you for your uh, contribution today. Um, I just want to hone in on, on a couple of points raised by colleagues, actually, there towards the end of, uh, of the discussion, and, and my questions and observations are quite brief. You'll be glad to hear. Um, but in terms of the point 62 under Head and 5 recommendations, and Deputy Clark touched on it, I, I, I'm just wondering, in terms of the reestablishment uh, of the Special Committee Against Apartheid, do you think Ireland has a particular window of opportunity uh, to focus on that and should focus on that, given our position uh, on the UN Security uh, Council? Um, I'm just wondering how important that is. I also appreciate that you didn't want to maybe give a, a, a perspective on the legal advice in relation to the Occupied Territories Bill. but. One of my own and indeed Senator Black's uh, biggest complaints as it passed through the Senate was that the government wouldn't publish that advice. Do you think it, at least it would be helpful if they were to publish uh, and allow us to see the Attorney General's uh, advice in relation to the view that, that, that there are illegalities or whatever else uh, around uh, that bill? Uh, and indeed, based on what you have said in terms of your previous remark, there remarks these houses uh, passed a uh, motion uh, calling on the government to recognise the state of Palestine. Um, and I, again, I, I'm keen to hear what, what Ireland can do as a government and a, as a state in practical, tangible terms uh, around this issue. And given what you've said there around the two-state solution, how important now is uh, states and governments around the world recognising uh, the state uh, of Palestine? Sure. Professor. I'll try to be brief with respect to that, and I'll work backwards. On the state of Palestine recognition, I believe it is politically important. It's not simply, it has a symbolic uh, measure to it, but it, it, it winds up building upon the tally of the 135 or so states in the world that have already recognized the state of Palestine. Something like two-thirds of the membership of the General Assembly has done that, but very few, well, very few from Europe. The only one I'm aware of, obviously, is Sweden with respect to that. And, <laughs> Uh, I, I spoke to a Swedish diplomat who said, we were told if we went ahead first, we'd crack the ice and others would follow, and they're still looking behind them uh, for others to wind up following. It would, of course, I think, be a, another important political uh, statement with respect to the, uh, uh, the absolute necessity insisted by the world community of ending this prolonged occupation. So yes, I, I think a state, uh, recognizing the state of Palestine should be a part of the, of the foreign policy of any country that recognizes what's going on in Israel and Palestine. Publishing the advice of the, of the Attorney General, um, you know, if, if perhaps my advice, uh, however, um, uh, however simplistic it is, that that there be a way of fi finding a, uh, a way out of the stalemate and having it, the issue put before a respected, agreed upon legal decision maker, that would require everybody to put their very best legal arguments, including what the advice of the Attorney General uh, has been with respect to this. I think, you know, democracy obviously breeds in, in sunshine, and this is one of the kinds of issues that you'd want to be able to see the government putting its best argument forward with respect to this. Because, I, you know, as, as I am getting my crash course in Irish politics this week, I can't find anybody um, who opposes the self-determination of the Palestinians, the harsh realities of, uh, of the occupation, the fact that this has become a one-state uh, uh, reality of unequal rights. Nobody I've come across, uh, talking to either senators or to TDs, uh, seem to disagree with that. So this strikes me as, as, as more of an unnecessary barrier um, uh, to, to advancing even further with respect to an enlightened policy that's going to hasten the end of the occupation and the realization of self-determination. So I, I would think uh, releasing the opinion of the, of the Attorney General, if I can speak out of turn, would make perfect sense so that uh, the best arguments on each side can then be uh, properly evaluated. And uh, if you just re would repeat to me, you asked me about the Committee of Apart uh, uh, Against Apartheid. Just tell me what... Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Suppose the recommendation calls that the United Nations would, would re-establish uh, that committee. And really, I'm just wondering, because from, from our perspective as a committee, obviously, we would be encouraging government to work to that regard. And I'm just wondering if the position on the UN Security Council, uh, in your view, because it is time limited uh, on this occasion, 
uh, it offers us an even greater opportunity to use uh, our, our diplomatic power and what's often referred to as soft power yeah. uh, at the UN to, to work towards bringing about the re-establishment of that committee. Sure, of course. And I would think that Ireland, uh, you know, certainly from foreign officials, foreign affairs officials that I've, I've spoken to, Ireland, of course, got, got on the uh, Security Council at the beginning of 2021 in order to be able to make a mark upon the world. Um, and it's done a commendable job in the, what, now 15 months uh, that it's been on the uh, on the, uh, the uh, Security Council. Nine months are left, and I'm sure there's a range of issues that Ireland uh, has uh, has put at the top of its uh, to-do list with respect to that, one of which I know has to do with Israel and Palestine. And I think there are concrete things that you've mentioned, certainly with respect to the supporting the reestablishment of the Committee Against Apartheid, and but all the other things that we've talked about over the last hour or so that couldn't, can be in Ireland's basket of goods to do in a, in a position that is probably not going to come again for another 10 to 15 years. You, you've, you've still got the moment to be able to, uh, to strike while the iron is hot for the last nine months. You know, make a difference during those, uh, during those nine months.